Welcome everyone, everyone to our Fallbert Climate Action Team meeting. Tonight's speaker is Keith Micus, who has been president of the San Diego EV Association for the past three years. Keith owns six EVs and has traveled over 150,000 miles in his EVs. Keith will talk about EVs and charging stations. If any of you have missed any of our presentations or would like to re-watch any, our videos can be found at fallbrookclimateactionteam.org or on YouTube. Also, if you'd like to help in any way, please leave your name and number in the chat and we will get back to you. Just a quick note, in December will be dark and our January presenter will be Megan Kelly from San Diego County, who will talk about the updated San Diego County CAP program. Well, without any further ado, here is Keith Micus. Thank you. Let me share my screen. All right, everyone should see the screen now. So thanks again. Uh, I'm Keith Micus. I'm the president of the San Diego Electric Vehicle Association. We still have monthly meetings in person in Balboa Park. So if you ever want to venture down. All right. So it's the second Wednesday of the month, 6 p.m. And we do bribe you with a pizza because we realize it's a challenging time to get to Balboa Park. So there's free food. No beverages, but food. <laughs> Hostage released as part of this deal. All right, so people held by Hamas crossed the border into Egypt earlier. What's so? What's an EV? You know, as defined, an electric vehicle is an electric motor that draws from batteries that propels the vehicle. It's fairly straightforward. You know, we get confused between internal combustion engine, ICE engines, hybrids. There's a lot of stuff going out there, but. This is kind of be an overview of a lot of terms and basics. And at the end, if you have a deeper question, we're going to go into that. So EV, electric vehicle. We got a BEV, battery electric vehicle. Uh, PHEV, plug-in hyd hybrid electric vehicle. FCEV, fuel cell high vehicle and our old favorite hybrid electric vehicles, which are technically not EVs. So to be considered an EV, or as what a lot of us care about is to get government funding or grants, it has to have a plug. So if you can plug your car into electricity, it's technically an EV. Uh, you know, just some types of uh, vehicles that are out there. These are terms you've either read or heard, you know, but ICE, that's what most of us have been drawing for the last hundred years. Internal combustion engine, you know, EVs or BEVs, you know, pretty much all Teslas, that's all they make. In the PHEV world, there's things like the Toyota Prius Prime. So the Prime has the plug, you know, the BMW i4, which it has the Rex, the range extender, and down in our fuel cell, you know, the Toyota Mirai, there's a station, you know, to get fuel for that in Del Mar, but uh, Toyota swears that's the way of the future and a lot of money, but it's technically is an EV because you take the hydrogen, you make energy, you split it and then makes power and then you drive the car. So no tailpipe emissions, but a lot of technology. Let's go. All right. So this one, uh, basically, the picture right there, the Toyota RAV4, that was the best-selling car in 2022 in California, followed by electric vehicle, Tesla, Model 3, Model Y, Prius. You know, it shows you that the consumer's price point is about $30,000, $28,000, and if you look at this same chart for Europe, you would see probably 10 electric vehicles in it. You know, they're making the switch a lot quicker. 
I think it's definitely happening with Tesla. Uh, 25% of new car sales last year in San Diego were electric vehicles. So we're definitely very progressive in the state of California. Just gonna go through a couple of types, but if you've never realized this, how Tesla named their cars, comes out to Model S, Model 3, X, and Model Y, they got sexy. They definitely, some marketing people were uh, playing with your emotions. PHEV, you know, if it has a plug, it's an EV. So again, examples that you might be familiar with, Toyota Prius Prime, uh, Hyundai Ioniq plug-ins, Hyundai Santa Fe, which is an SUV. Uh, lately, during Thanksgiving, I saw a lot of commercials on TV for the Volvo XC90 recharge. Exactly same thing, has an engine and a plug. The picture is actually the Mitsubishi uh, Outlander. They have a PHEV. It's actually a really nice 4x4. Not much of a towing capacity, but it is a nice SUV. You know, fuel cells, definitely they'll be here, but uh, BMW, Toyota, Honda, Land Rover, they all make them. Big issue is not a lot of spots to fill up your vehicle. It's kind of important if you wanna drive, being able to fill it up. And then our old friends, Toyota. You know, the purpose of this is just they spend a lot of money and they're, they, they have every right to be proud of the fact that, that they kind of came and mass produced the hybrid, but they really haven't done any switching to electrification. They say they are. Their advertisements say they are, but realistically, they all have just, just hybrids, not even plug-ins. They've got two plug-ins and the rest are just what you see here. They advertise them as electric, but they're not. They're just your normal hybrid vehicles. So don't get fooled with Toyota marketing. So why go electric? You know, you're like, I got a perfectly good car. It's probably going to last me 10 years or I only buy a car every 20 years. Best way to be nice to the environment is don't buy new things. There's a lot to be said for that. Keep your vehicles longer. You know, if the production is where you spend a lot of fossil fuels and climate warming gases, but EVs can help you on saving money, your day-to-day -day costs. Definitely have way less maintenance, less emissions, and even less toxic for the environment with less components. A car is still a car. It still has to be manufactured, minerals still extracted from the ground, still transported to dealerships. So the actual envelope of a car is a car, but there's features of EVs that can save you and help the environment. So these are just some uh, examples from my real world experience of cars. But uh, when I say less maintenance, for those of you that are familiar with $60 oil changes, you know, transmissions, engines, spark plugs, tune-ups. Most EVs will not need realistically any maintenance for three years. And when I say maintenance, I'm talking about wiper blades. We all have these uh, HEPA filters now in our cars that keep filtering the air. Tires, you know, a lot of people don't even think of tires as maintenance, that's just wear and tear. Brakes, you know, brakes, I've got, one EV that's going on 12, 13 years old. And it was in the tire store this week and the brakes were still perfectly good. Original brakes, you know, there's no oils, there's no gases, there's no fluids. Each car has a little bit different, but there is cooling systems for batteries in the cars. Uh, kind of here's a list of my vehicles on maintenance. I kind of was building an EV, home built one, no maintenance. 
my Nissan Leaf that I still drive around, I've spent three thousand twelve dollars in twelve years, thirteen years. I had a Model th- S. Uh, I still have it, and kind of that's what's at the bottom showing you what I spent this year. Air filter. It's got these really fancy door handles that protrude from the car and go flush. Those fail all the time. Design thing. Hopefully, they say I've got the newest ones. Uh, tires. So to date, a little over, a little over a thousand bucks. We had a Chevy Bolt and we replaced it with another Chevy Bolt. We've put tires on it once. <laughs> so, you know, the, the things that, you know, when you used to go in to talk about your oxygen gauge, your something sensor, this or that, you know, a lot of that doesn't exist. And so just maintenance is going to be a lot more minimal. Uh, you know, right here, Consumer Reports says 50% over gasoline cars. So some vehicles, Tesla, a little more expensive because they got some bells and whistles. Nissan, it's just been tires, windows. I replaced a window, but relatively not maintenance, just keeping the car on the road, keeping it in great condition. Here's a little cartoon and just a little comparison. So. You know, we care about what the car is admitting. You know, they're like, well, your electricity has to come from somewhere. Uh, You know, electric vehicles, even if you account for production of electricity, you know, one third the tailpipe emissions of a gas car. And then kind of this little cartoon I found, it's been depicted a couple ways, but you know, back in the day, diesel felt so dirty you know, but your electric car was so clean, but you're getting it from power stations. Well, I think when our little early morning chat, we were just chatting there that uh, some of us have solar, some of us are community choice members, and we can choose to have a lot, 100% renewable power to power our cars. Uh, So your car can be, in theory, 100% green. You could be driving on photons and electrons from the sun. So the conversation could definitely shift. You know, for those of you that want to really know what does it cost to operate an electric vehicle, this is basic. I used $5 a gallon. You know, the average car is, I internal combustion engine car gets 25 miles to the gallon. So to drive 59 miles, you know, would cost you about, an EV, $3.49. If you're an sdg e member, you can sign up for these uh, daily emails and text alerts from ChargePoint. And they tell you what the real world gas, I mean, uh, excuse me, my, the real world electric prices. They vary day to day, day to season, but it kind of gives you a thing, you know, it's, it's about one third the price of gas to fuel an electric vehicle. The more expensive gasoline gets, the cheaper an electric vehicle gets. Gas prices fluctuate daily, if not hourly. Electric prices fluctuate once a day, or if it's for your home, it fluctuates twice a year. Winter rates, summer rates. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with uh, Robert Llewellyn, he's an actor. He's got a podcast, and I, th- I thought this is just a great thing. You know, the genuine hurdle to mass adoption of electric vehicles is not charging. You know, electric car technology works. All the problems are psychological, not technological. But having ubiquitous, easy to use price networks is in many places. That is the problem. And I'll agree, you know, you have a home, you're fortunate to have a home, a garage, you can put in a charger. You got no problem having an electric vehicle. If you live in an apartment, a condo, you know, multiple people live there with multiple cars, public charging is definitely an issue. 
I pulled uh, the next thing off of a, one is a EV match and the other was a plug share. For those of you that live in the Fallbrook area, you know, according to plug share where they say they take all the maps and they put it all in one app on your phone and you can find all the charging stations. Well, it only found four of the six charging stations in Fallbrook. So, you know, you'd have public utilities, public library, a, a hotel, the airfield, and then you had two private residents that have chargers at their houses, you know, that let you charge there. You definitely pay. It's not free, but, you know, if you want to check it out, you know, there's definitely public charging and ways to find public charging. Uh, when we talk about charging, there's three types of charging and it's actually broken into two sections, but it's still three types. You have level one, which is a 110 outlet. Wherever you can charge your cell phone, you in theory can charge your electric vehicle. Level two is 240, which is a lot more like an electric oven or an electric dryer, you know, usually 16 to 50 amps. You get about 25 miles for every hour it's plugged in. DC fast charging, Tesla supercharging. Those are words you all hear. But to then break it down further, there's different connectors or plugs. So the J1772 was the standard. Every electric vehicle had that. Every Tesla came with an adapter for that so you could charge your cars. Uh, there's been some radical movement into shifting to a new standard, which is the NAX, North American Charging Standard. That is what Tesla uses. And basically the industry is kind of migrating that direction. Then most other cars have CCS combo, combined charging system. And that's how the Chevy Bolts, uh, Hyundai's, Kia's, they all do their fast charging with that. So how to charge your car? You know, like I said, wherever there's an outlet, you know, you can plug in your car, low cost, doesn't cost you anything. Most EVs come with a backpack charger. You know, you just plug it in, you can charge your car. You're gonna get three to four miles for every hour that the car is plugged in. So if you're driving 30 miles a day, but your car sits on the, sits in your driveway for 12 to 15 hours, you could probably charge it off a 110 outlet. You know, it's just, they're ubiquitous. It's what we all have. Like I said, wherever you can charge your phone, you can charge your car. Next one starts getting complicated, but still simple. Home charging. If you're fortunate enough to have a home or garage or a spot where you can install a charger, you know, most of them are about 240, 40 amp. For every hour that the vehicle is plugged in, you get 25 miles of range. So basically, you drive your car, you leave it plugged in for four hours, you get 100 miles. For those you know engineers in the room, you know more amperage. So if you have a 50 amp, 60 amp, 80 amp, you can definitely charge your car faster with more amps. And then chargers are also. I have one of these Clipper Creeks, uh, very low technology. They were they used to build chargers for forklifts, electric forklifts. You just plug it into your, your car. It does the purpose. Not very smart, it does the job. Next couple are all Tesla chargers. You know, more bells and whistles and you can control them with apps and things. You can do multiple daisy chain charging, but from there, you know, the sky's the limit. You want to talk to your charger. You can have Lexus chargers. You can chargers run <coughs> 199 to probably upwards of seven, eight hundred dollars. Just how much technology you want or what you want it to do. Uh, you're probably familiar with these Tesla little tombstones, pyramids, you know, whatever you want to call them. And then the Electrify America Green Zombies, uh, 
Electrify America is the charging network that was built out of the Volkswagen Dieselgate scandal. So we can thank them for building a network. But at the same time, I don't think they're committed to supporting the network. These, you, uh, you pull in, you plug your car in, and roughly 40 minutes later, your car is full. So supercharging, you're never going from empty to 100% full. You're usually going somewhere from 10 to 20% to about 80% full. So it's usually just enough power to make it the next two, 300 miles to your next charging session. Uh, prices can vary. Got the next page. Yeah, so here's a, a charging session that I did at Electrify America. We were there just about an hour, you know, 43 cents a kilowatt. The entire charging cost cost me $15. And it said I put in a 35 kilowatts of power. So, you know, to kind of give you an idea of you're doing a 200 mile road trip. This was done with my wife, Chevy Bolt, which is a 258 miles. So you figure $15 to drive 200 miles. It's a pretty, pretty good rate. But like we're all familiar with electricity now, depending upon the time of day, you can be paying substantially more for power or less for power. Kind of hinted to this earlier, but uh, here's some pictures. The Tesla charger versus the uh, CCS combo. Uh, substantially different in size, different in weight, different in usability. It's a much more pleasant experience. It's more like using a garden hose versus using a fire hose. You know, we could probably all use a fire hose if we had to, but a garden hose is much easier to maneuver and work around. Uh, starting probably in February, the dominoes started to fall and Ford came out, said they're going to go to the NAX system. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, General Motors, GM, Mercedes, Volvo, Polestar, they all started, you know, Rivian, Aptera, Fisker, etc. Basically, Volkswagen and Stellantis, which is Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Peugeot, Fiat. It's a, it's a big monumental Stellantis. They have not yet committed to go that way, but most have. Uh, a lot of them are saying that come next year, 2024, their cars will come with an adapter, but in 2025, their cars will have the, uh, the NAX plug. So for a year, you'll have to use an adapter if you do like fast charging or anything, but after that, the cars will basically be easy just to use, no adapters needed. So a little screenshot on my cell phone and, you know, what are charging apps? I tell people they're like gasoline credit cards from the 70s. For those of us that remembered, you'd have a Shell credit card, you'd have a mobile credit card, you have a Texaco, a Sunoco. You know, if you were driving across the country, you didn't use your Visa MasterCard. You, you just had a million gasoline credit cards. And that's kind of what the world of uh, charging is right now. There's a lot of apps. They do a lot of things. Uh, some are better than others. My wisdom... While, you know, to you guys, if you're ever planning on taking a road trip, before you go on your road trip, make sure you download a whole bunch of these apps. Next thing, try out some public charging in your hometown. You know, get familiar pulling up to a charging station in a place that you're comfortable at, you know, possibly daytime, good lighting, and get the, and figure out how to get the app to work. Because the worst thing you want to be is your car has 10% charge, it's dark, you're tired, and the thing's not working, it can be a frustration factor. So better do a little research and usage before you go. Also, know, you know which networks you like best. I tend to like EVgo. It's a personal preference. Uh, I've been using them for a while, but 
we went to Tucson and the hotel we stayed at had the juice box network. And so it was free. So I just had to learn how to download the app and do it. And while doing this research, one of the, uh, the charging stations in Fallbrook uses switch, which I had never heard of. So that's why I kind of put it there in the bottom S W T I C H. Uh, you know, there's, there's always an app that's going to pop up, you know, and I just rather, like I said, when I do a road trip, especially in a non-Tesla vehicle, you know, use the apps, log in, get familiar with them, just have a better experience. A very important thing. A lot of us are like, they say there's a lot of money out there and there is a lot of money out there. Uh, you know, the IRA, the Investment uh, Inflation Reduction Act, you know, that was basically refunding all automotives. So $7,500 off a purchase of a car or off a lease, you can now get $4,000 off of a used car up to. Uh, those are off of tax, your tax liability, a little different. Uh, CR, CBRP, Clean Vehicle Rebate Program, you know, it is what you get the money from California. It's currently ran out of money. There's a waiting list, but probably this year you won't get the money. Uh, it'll, it'll most likely be refund, be funded next year. Uh, things maybe you're unaware of, but if you're a first responder or a teacher, SDG and E gets you a thousand bucks. There's many grants out there. Uh, I'll put one here. Uh, if you're lower income, and I think when they say lower income, it's four times or 400% of poverty. So uh, the Clean Vehicle Assistant Program through the Beneficial State Foundation, you know, they had $5,000. Uh, that money is currently, again, already used this year. CARB, uh, California Air Resources Board. If you happen to live in more polluted areas, let's say Barrio Logan or the Central Valley, they have money. Uh, the Bureau of, of Automotive Repair, they have money, 1,000 to 1,500 bucks. You have an older vehicle that they consider a polluter. Remember uh, cash for clunkers, they've got some money there that's available. South Coast Air Quality Board, same thing. They're saying they're willing to give you $9,000 to $12,000 for your older polluting cars. Some of the other benefits, you know, you get the, the decals. So if you take the express lanes, you can save money there. Uh, Costco, uh, if you're a Costco member, they're cost, sign up for their uh, Costco auto savings program. Right now, they're giving $3,000 off of some EVs. I partook in that when we bought our last car. Definitely, you just have to sign up for the program and jump through a couple little hoops, and you can get that money. Uh, for those of you that are still working, a lot of employers encourage you with money for cars. Uh, credit unions, Clean Energy Credit Union, who uh, works with the Electric Vehicle Association of, of America, they offer low interest rate loans for EVs and then manufacturers, you know, they, they love this, but uh, different money all the time, different incentives. So cash back, some offer two years of free public charging, uh, free EVSE, that's the electric vehicle supplied charger or the uh, EV backpack. It's a charger that comes with the car. And some companies are even throwing in home chargers, installation and the charger. So not directly that it's money in your hand, but it's possibly money you'd have to spend. Right here, this is like I said, I just got this one from a Costco. So they're offering surprisingly off thousand bucks off of a certified pre-owned pole stars. But you know, they offer on new Volvos, on Buicks, GM. So right now, Costco member, get a thousand bucks. You know, it's just, you're already a member, so why not take advantage of it? So we had a, a 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV. My wife loved it. 
Uh, it was a lease. So during COVID, it uh, came up for lease. They wanted us to pay 2400 bucks to 24,000 bucks, sorry, to save it, keep it. And my wife said, nope, when we knew we could buy one for about 20,000. So here was the math that we used. <laughs> we acquired a $40,000 EV for 20,000. You know, at the time, Costco was offering $3,000, took that money. Chevrolet said, if you finance the car through Chevrolet, they'd give us $1,500. We uh, weren't working as much, so our income was a lot less. So we qualified for the beneficial foundation grant, 5,000. My wife is a school teacher, so she got the SDG and E thousand. And we happened to be, they were just about ready to discontinue at that time, the federal money. So we qualified for that. And then we got the state of California. So in the end, we almost got the car for half price. And that was relatively with, there was no haggling with the dealer. It was Christmas Eve. There was one car and that's what we got. <laughs> Made my wife happy. So same thing, like the previous slides where I showed you all that money, you know, you, you might not be able to qualify for everything, but there's definitely different avenues and different places to get money to put down. And in my case, most of these were grants or off on my taxes. So the grants, I basically found out which car dealership was pre-approved for that grant. And I made sure that two of these, the Costco, the sdg &E, and the beneficial dealer, which dealership took those three programs. So it was just me signing a piece of paper saying, they're gonna apply for my grant money for me. And if I it doesn't come through, I have to come up with more money, but it did come through, so versus the federal was off taxes and the state money was, you know, a couple months later once they processed all the paperwork. So 2024, which is coming up really soon, there will be dealerships that now this 7,500 and the $15 will be at time of purchase for EVs. Uh, just the federal government has to roll out a program to a lot of dealerships and a lot of time. So it is coming easier and it's more off the EV. It's less of a tax liability situation. So we're kind of getting towards the end of the program, but I kind of touched on this before, but uh, if you're planning a trip, this is what I, I do. It's called a, a better route planner. It's an app actually uh, Rivian that builds those trucks and SUVs and the Amazon electric vehicles, they just bought this company. So it is a really great navigation system. You can geek out into it as much as you want, but uh, they put in terrain, they put in a lot of information in it. So uh, most OEMs have navigation systems in the cars, Tesla, you plug in your destination and it plots you from charging station to charging station to charging station. Uh, Apple and Android Auto, they keep adding more and more features to them. Uh, they can be clunky. You do have to use your cell phone. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're running a trip to Los Angeles, let's say, or Santa Barbara, you know, plan your network, you know, it's, you can be like, oh, I got to charge my car. Well, be strategic. Find a place that you want to eat a meal at. While you're eating, you can have your car plugged into a fast charger. Uh, you know, while you eat your meal, your car gets charged. And the last one is for those longer road trips. Uh, last summer, actually two summers ago, 2022, we drove to uh, Vancouver, Canada, B.C., we did the whole Baja California to British Columbia, BC to BC. And that was one of the things that I looked for was hotel charging. As of right now, I'll say most hotels that I've gone to, if they have a charger, it's free. So you roll in there at five o'clock, six o'clock at night, you plug it in. By the morning, your car is now fully charged. 
It's free. I definitely tell hotels all the time that I stay there. I'm like, I am staying at your hotel because you offer electric vehicle charging because nobody wants to do a road trip, get to a destination, then have to find charging, spend 40 minutes there, then go back to your hotel. You know, this is just far more convenient, you know, charging at your hotel. So uh, a lot of hotel websites, uh, an example, I, when I went to St. George, Utah, we stayed at Best Western. If you rolled all the way down to the bottom of amenities, towards the bottom of their amenities on a lot of their sites, they said EV charging. So, you know, just, just look for it. And then, of course, before I went, I called the hotel. I'm like, I'm coming. Are your chargers working? Sometimes they don't know. But in my case, they said, I see cars parked there. And they got the cable stuck in. I'm like... That sounded good enough for me. <laughs> if other people were plugged in, it, they were probably working. So, and that, like I said, it's free. So, you know, you save another $15 on your road trips. So with that, like I said, there's a little higher overview, you know, we can possibly dive into the weeds a little bit early, a little bit of a moment, but uh, our local chapter is San Diego EV.org. Uh, our national champ chapter is uh, my EVA.org. Like I said, Second Wednesday of the month, free pizza, Balboa Park, San Diego Automotive Museum. Uh, there's my email, Keith at evaosd.org, and Bob, who is our vice president. Bob is also the president of the Tesla Club of San Diego. So, you know, we, we all wear many hats. But uh, like I said, I do have a Tesla. I have a Chevy Bolt. I have a Nissan. You know, uh, I mentioned I have a reservation for an Uptera. I would like that. Uh, I got a reservation for a cyber truck. I don't need that, but <laughs> I don't know. I got teenagers going away, so maybe they're going to take one of my cars and I'll need another car. But with that, I'd like to thank you. I see a question. We'll start with this bottom question first. Why does Costco provide money? So Costco provides money in a lot of different ways. And I think Costco, up until about 2012, Costco had electric vehicle charging stations at all of their Costco locations. That was kind of a thing. Costco was like, they saw electric vehicles coming. They put them in. They were offering free charging. And I think they were doing it to offset, this is my interpretation, offsetting carbon credits, offsetting clean air offering free charging. They've got gas stations, but I think at the time gas stations weren't that big as their gas stations were producing more money for them. I feel they discontinued the electric vehicle chargers and a holdover is they still offer cash back for being a member. You know, that's what your membership pays for. So I have a Nissan Leaf. It's a 2011. Uh, when I bought it, they said it was 100 miles. It was never 100 miles. Uh, it was 72 miles. Uh, now, I did have the battery replaced at 40,000 miles. It, the first battery on the EV, it didn't last. Since then, I now have 112,000 miles, so almost 80,000 miles on the second battery. Uh, still I get 65 miles, so I'm content. I can run from Rancho Bernard to Carlsbad and back home and not have any issues. So going up to Tom's question, will Tesla charging stations be open to non-Tesla vehicles? Yes. As of right now, if you have a non-Tesla vehicle, they have specific charging stations, not all charging stations. They basically made an adapter. They're calling it the magic dock. And uh, you have to be in the Tesla app. You have to already be pre-approved and they want to know what vehicle you have. So it's not seamless yet, but in 2024, which is just around the corner, they have said that's when 
there'll be more just adapters available out there and anybody can plug in at any Tesla charging station. You do have to remember that Tesla charging stations were all designed for the cars to be predominantly pulled in, parked in backwards. Tesla charging stations have very small cables. Not all EVs have charging ports in the same location. So there will be some, uh, you know, disgruntled Tesla customers, fanboys, fan base when a non EV is in there and they're in the wrong parking space because the cable doesn't reach their car. So that, uh, let's roll. I have it up here. All right. Uh, we talked a little bit about that officially. Let's go. All right, so are Prius emissions a lot higher than EVs? So the whole cradle to grave or cradle to cradle, you know, you have a Prius, it does have higher emissions. I mean, I'm not going to get very scientific on this, but if you're only driving 2,000 miles a year and you do not mind buying gasoline, you know, you probably have the best vehicle for yourself. You know, like I said, there's a lot of inherent energy in building a car. That's one step, you know, EVs, same thing as combustion engines. So if you want a new car, you know, whatever new car you have, there will be amount of emission pollution, greenhouse gases, all that stuff in the building process. But driving so few miles if you're happy with your car i would say stick with it you know it's 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 a great thing i mean that's one of the reasons why my nissan leaf i figure i'll keep that car until it gets down battery gets down to 40 miles 40 miles means i can still run from my house to escondido to penasquitas and not run out of range i mean so predominantly I drive my Model S to work. And then when I run errands at home, I use the Nissan Leaf. Uh, give an example, my Tesla, it's a 2013. So it doesn't have autopilot, doesn't have all the fancy stuff, but when it was new, it was 253 miles of range. Right now I have about 220 miles of range. So I lost about 30 miles of range in 10 years. So you could say I'm losing three miles a year of range. Same thing. I mean, I could, I could foresee myself having that, that Tesla for another 10 years. Even that, if I lose 20 miles of range, still 190 miles, that's sufficient for me. Uh, all right. Bought a Tesla adapter. Have not had a chance to try it. I would suggest, Mark, you go to a charging station and try. There's a, there's a lot of companies out there that sell adapters. Uh, I I just know that there's a lot of uh, internal circuitry and sometimes, you know, if, if it's from the OEM, you know, you got your Nissan or you got your Hyundai adapter, I'd be more in faith that it works. Uh, if I bought a Tesla adapter off of Amazon, I would try it. <laughs> I would try it really soon to make sure that you bought something that actually like I said, just like charging networks, use them before you go on a road trip. That way there's no, you know, stress, no anxiety, no anything. One thing to add to your car, are they able to split your 220s so your clothes dryer? Yes. So can you split your 220? There is a company called Neo Charge. 
uh, if you're a member of the Electric Vehicle Association, they offer, I believe, a 25% discount, but we're currently in Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all those sales. I guarantee they have it. Uh, it's a UL approved device. So you literally, it's like a little box and you plug your dryer into one side, your electric car charger into the other side, and it will only take power from one device. So you can, you can, you know, there's an app on your phone and then you tell it like, let the car always have priority or let the dryer always have priority or only charge the car between midnight and 6 a.m., you know, any other time the dryer. So those are definitely, they're out there because I know in my case, my, uh, my garage is about 15 feet from my electrical panel. So when we did get the Nissan, they provided us a charger, but they only covered three feet. So I had to cover the other 11 feet. So even when they say free chargers, you know, it's, if your electrical panels in your garage, you're probably a better situation or on the outside of your garage versus mine's on the other side of the house. So it cost me a little bit more money, but still the free charger. Yeah. Uh, built for convenience sake. Yep. Uh, definitely SDG and E great source. Uh, SDG and E slash drive electric, I believe is their whole electric site. Uh, last month, maybe now two months ago, they had a EV day. Uh, they put on their big event where they was down at the new Snapdragon Stadium. They had test drives. They had, our club was there with vehicles. They had some manufacturers and they had a whole bunch of nonprofits promoting solar, uh, EV charging. Uh, Grid Alternatives, you know, is a great organization. If you're low income, they put solar on your house. And if you qualify, they'll even put a, a free electric vehicle charger for future-proofing your house. Uh, they're they're great. They're there. Uh, yeah, so there are different organizations. Uh, not sure what the acronym before energy.gov is, but definitely, you know, there's websites. The government, you know, controls a website that they list all the charging stations. I would go more like the apps. You know, if let's say you're going to Jerome, Arizona for the holidays, beautiful place in Arizona, you know, there's, there's chargers there, but make sure that you've, you know, same thing, be wise, use the app before you go, be familiar with it and how it works just to make yourself less anxiety. Have you had to replace your 12 volt battery in your model S? I have had to replace it. Uh, For those of you that don't know, even though you might have an 85 kilowatt or a 62 kilowatt battery, that is the battery that drives your propulsion system. All EVs still have a lead acid battery that controls the basic computer components of your car. You want to unlock your car. You want to the, the alarm. That's what the, your 12 volt battery controls. Uh, your radio, same thing, that's on a 12 volt system. Uh, Hyundai, I believe now three years ago, they were the first automaker ever to put a gel battery in a car. So race car drivers, all those people have all put gel batteries or different 12 volt battery chemistries, but uh, predominantly lead ass, it's been around for 100 plus years, they're 99 percent recyclable the lead's recyclable the acid the plastic uh it works that's why manufacturers use them uh they're different than your traditional one where you top off the electrolytes and stuff but they're sealed but they still do the pro the job i think mine was about a 240 dollar if i remember right job to get it fixed uh There's a lot of new battery technologies out there. Solid state batteries, for example. Oh, solid, solid state is, you know, the, 
the golden, you know, that everyone is, is looking for. If you know anyone who has a pacemaker, they have a solid state battery about the size of a quarter. You know, they, it's inside them. It, it lasts forever. Uh, just like lithium, just scaling that up to the size of a car is where it's currently not working. Uh, Fisker, uh, they've got the, ocean and they just released another one uh, they basically said the first thousand of their vehicles are going to be lithium and then after that they're going to be solid state they've had to walk that back and say well solid state's not there yet toyota constantly keeps saying they're making solid state breakthroughs if they do that will be amazing uh lithium is probably half the weight of lead so when I was doing a lead, you know, a conversion from an internal combustion engine car, I had an old Saab and I was doing that, you know, just hundreds of pounds of lead acid batteries versus just a couple hundred pounds of lithium batteries and solid state would do that again. Uh, those of us that are they're engineers or no engineers know that you can't just put a battery twice as big in a vehicle to go twice as far. A bigger battery adds more weight. More weight means the motors have to work harder. You actually don't get, it's a proportional thing. So if you can lessen the weight of the vehicle, why a lot of EVs, most Teslas are majority aluminum, uh, a lot of carbon fiber, same thing to lighten the weight. Uh, they're not using steel. And if solid state batteries, uh, I heard about cement capacitors, you know, capacitors can store energy and discharge them. You know, we all know cement's been around for 2000 years. You know, that's an interesting thing. You know, it's relatively non-toxic at the end of its life. Making cement uses a peck of a lot of energy and does pull out of global gases and pollution. Uh, I know there's diamond, I know there's sodium batteries, there's there's a lot of different battery technologies, but basically the, the modern cell phone allowed us to get electric vehicles, lithium batteries and all the cell phones, they became safe, we have them in our pockets, we drop them, you know, and then they were translate transitioned to vehicles. Are there any other solar charging vehicles besides Aptera? There was a Dutch company that was making one that had solar panels on kind of all the sides. I've recently heard that they are now focusing on just solar PV and not focusing on the cars anymore. So that's where they're research uh yeah so that's one of the things uh aptera is carbon fiber composites really lightweight they've got bendable flexible solar cells they're also using three wheels so in theory they've reduced it by one quarter <laughs> they got rid of one of the wheels of the car the two-seater, uh, there hasn't been a lot of two-seater, two-door EVs. Most EVs are four doors. They need a bigger car for the bigger battery. And then a Terra, you know, one of the exciting things, if it comes true, is, you know, for they're saying every day that it's parked outside, it'll get 40 miles of range. So basically, in theory, you could just drive off the sun forever, and you're not going to need a, even a car charger at your house. So that could be, you know, a great thing for condo and apartment dwellers or inner city people that have cars that they don't have to worry about public charging. Just leave the car on the street. So just a little background on our car club, uh, <laughs> the electrical 
the Electric Vehicle Association of San Diego was established in 1967. <laughs> We've been around uh, for the first 40 years. It was to convert gasoline cars to electric. And that's when I found them. Like I said, I had I had an old Saab. Transmission wasn't good on it. I'm like, I'm like, just moved. I just moved from New York City to California. I had a driveway. I had a garage. I'm like, this can't be that tough. <laughs> so that's when I found the club, and that's what they were totally uh, did. Our secretary of our club, Dave Crow, he converted a Volkswagen Golf, and uh, he recently sold it. So he had it for about ten years. He sold it to some college kid that wanted to soup it up. Uh, there's still some of our members. Uh, they formed a secondary club called Kick Gas Club, and they still do uh, internal combustion engine conversions to electric. And another one is uh, EV Riders. Same thing, kind of taking old cars, hot rod them, but just to electric. So that way, but our club in the 2010 with Tesla and Nissan Leafs, we kind of transitioned to advocating for the mass adoption of electric vehicles. Uh, Larry Emerson in our club, he's our government affairs person, and he goes to a lot of the meetings. He's connected with a lot of the, the political groups, the action, and just what's out there, what needs to be done. You know, he's very focused. He lives down in National City, so he's very focused on you know, lower income communities. So we definitely have that. Uh, we are working with the uh, American, I want to say Lung Association, I believe it was, just because there is no tailpipe emission for electric vehicles and for people that have breathing issues and low income communities, that's a big reach where they basically are like, let's get these polluting things why do you know people live next to highways and low-income neighborhoods always have lots of asthma well particulate matter so we are working with them for quite a few years uh, there's another group and I'm drawing a blank on it that we do work with another national organization so we do that uh, I come and talk to groups like yourself uh, I talked to a Northrop Grumman. They were trying to convince their employees at Northrop Grumman who basically make drones and blow up the world. You know, they, they're like, well, we need our employees to get <laughs> that way. Uh, yeah. My arch is headed. There's climate ending life. <laughs> it's so like I said, you know, I'm kind of a proponent you know, I, I could buy a new car every year if I wanted to, but I know that's not the right thing to do. The car you have is the best car to have unless something seriously goes wrong with it. You know, there's so much inherent energy in the car, manufacturing it. You know, there's always a new bells or whistles or there's a new iPhone every year. You know, if you could just use your iPhone for one more year, you know, you've, you've, you've halved, you've made it 50% longer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, with that, we have uh, Ramona, Ramona, Ramona's, I think sustainable Ramona is what they're called. We work with them occasionally. We've done some Earth Day events with them. We got them to, uh, pull their float in the Ramona parade with a Tesla model X. Uh, they definitely said they got some booze and cheers from people that it wasn't a gas guzzling truck out there, but you know, EVs pulling low, low speed, no pollution, you know, and quiet. Looks like we're almost at an hour. I don't know if there's any more questions or if there's something you want me to circle back on. And I think I got all the questions in the chat answered. Well, I think that's about it. Um, 
And if you want to leave any, your, did you leave your contact info in the chat in case anybody wants to contact you about anything? There we go. Okay. Okay. That is my club email. So it's not, I don't exactly check it every day, but I definitely do check it. <laughs> Well, thank you, Keith. It looks like we're out of time. And thank you for presenting to our club. It was very good. And thank you, listeners, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you in January. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.